someone comes running up. Are you the Fiona the sheep guy? And I was like, eh, yeah, yeah, that's me. <laughs> and runs off. <laughs> and I was like, how do I deal with that? I think soft play is almost becoming a thing of the past. <gasps> that surprises me. Mm -hmm. This is the text I get from Cami. Christmas Eve. I'm wanting to start a coffee shop. How much money do I need? <laughs> I'm like, Cami, it's Christmas Eve. It was actually Christmas Eve. I've been Cami. I've been Iona. And we are both Bed by, by Farmers. farmers. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Fed by Farmers podcast with me, Cami Wilson. And me, Iona Murray. Today we have a very, very exciting guest. Huge, huge social media following. And it's Ben Best from Dulscone Farm. Do you know, I, you were building me up there because I was forgetting whose intro we were doing. <laughs> well, we're going back to doing the intros before the videos because it means we can talk about current topics and then we don't have the poor guests sitting there so poor ben doesn't have to sit there while iona and i chat about our week mm -hmm. have you done anything this week um great so <laughs> i have <laughs> i've been back filming with landward you know if it takes that long to think it's been a rough week you've been in here that's what's wrong i have been back filming with landward thanks for asking yeah <laughs> give us a minute wait yeah, no, i'm terrible ain't i you know, I was getting, a, I got a row. For, I need to do an apology, actually, about last week's podcast. Why? I, I'm too eager to jump in every time there's a f someone takes a breath. It's like I'm terrified of a moment's silence, and I'm just constantly jumping in, saying things, and talking over the top of people. You've just got excited. You've just got excited questions. I, I'm. I am just quite an excited person. I think, and yeah, but it's bad. It looks like bad manners. You know, even when I listened to it back, like the one with you and Lizzie. Mm -hmm. Now. What folk don't realise is, if I don't jump in, Lizzie isn't going to jump in either. Like, Lizzie would just sit and not say anything. So Maybe it's not it... like I was cutting Lizzie off. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I did speak too much. So next time we do a Q&A and Lizzie's here, you two can just do it and I'll step outside. Okay. Okay, so that's 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 the promise you have from me. Yeah, but we have Ben Best from uh, Doscoan Farm today. Doscoan Farm, for those that you don't know, is a farm park in Dumfries. Mm -hmm. And it was really brought into the... The limelight during the Fiona, the loneliest sheep, yep. escapade. And, and that is now the home of Fiona, the loneliest sheep. They have over 300,000 followers on Facebook. Do check them out there. And of course, as always, big thank you to our sponsors, Treshure Bolus. Find your Bolus. Treshure Bolus from Animax and Crystalix. Extra, well, it's extra high energy that's in the studio. But it's just Crystalix in general. They do organic. They do... Other things for cows. <laughs> yes. People give cows things as well. Oh, not, do they? Yes, I'm not really sure what you give. Magnesium, I think. Do you know magnesium's very good for humans sleeping? I take magnesium every night. Do you, Cammy? True story. 100 milligrams, I think it is. What, is it just like a wee capsule? Yeah, it's just like a wee vitamin supplement. Interesting. It's not a capsule, it's just a wee, it looks like a wee white tablet. Um, not like a chewy vitamin? No, I take one of Jock's chewy vitamin C's in the morning. They're, they're lovely, they aren't are they? Delicious. They're good. It's probably such a yeah. small dose, I'm really just eating a sweetie. Yeah, you, a nice. you actually get the same vitamin C from a fruit pastel. <laughs> 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 from a skittle. Taste the rainbow. Uh, but yeah, I, I do have one of Jock's in the morning and we have cod liver oil. I have magnesium at night because it's meant to help you have a more, I don't know what it does. Better sleep. But, but I'll be honest, mm -hmm. I'm a, I've, I've said it before. Good sleeper. Great sleeper great sleeper yeah and i have this crazy thing we've discussed it before and I, I think i sent you a screenshot the other week I, I set my alarm for a crazy time and i still woke up before it i know i wake up every day i'm not saying every day there'll be the odd time i don't but virtually every day i wake up you know half an hour or, or 15 minutes before my alarm goes off yeah no matter when your alarm's set for yeah that's how crazy it was because that day yeah. i was getting up to oh. drive somewhere stupid like aberdeen or something so i was getting up at like half past three yeah and i woke up at quarter past three yeah and it's, it's this mad. weird Body, internal body clock. Well, it's, 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 I actually think it's anxiety. Yeah, worried about sleeping in. Yeah, because I actually did sleep in one day uh, during scanning. Oh, did you? Crazy. And I haven't done that since, this is a true story, I slept in one day in the police as well. And it was yeah. the one day I had my officer safety training. Oh, no. So I actually had a course, you'd have got away with it any other yeah, day, but I had yeah. to be there for nine for the training course. Didn't get there to half nine because I woke up. <sighs> Oh, and it's such a late start as well back then. That was the crazy yeah. thing. But what happened the day I slept in my scanning this year was sitting up editing a video till mm. like one o'clock in the morning. Folded the laptop over. Thought, yeah. oh, fuck this, up to bed. I, I was raging because it was so late at night. Yeah. 
jumped in bed and didn't even set an alarm. Oh, no. And then, yeah, I was just, I just slept. And I think part of it was I didn't even think about the time I needed to be up. So you hadn't had that thought so process the night the before. Brain. You hadn't even yeah. thought, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that, the shame of that. It just, yeah. I think it's sleep anxiety now. I wake up before the alarm. But yes, thanks to our sponsors. <laughs> Did we need to, I don't know how we got to that there. Thanks to our sponsors for coming on board. As always, if you do go and buy uh, some Trace Your Bolus or some Chris Sucks High Energy, do mention at the shop that you're doing it because they sponsor this podcast. It is great for us and they do hear about it and, and they, they feed it back to me. So it's fantastic. Now, should we get on with the interview? Yes, let's there's, get into there's it. There's enough meeting this as it is without us rambling on and you've not done anything this week anyway. So <laughs> will we get started? Yes. Let's go. And here he is, our special, special guest for today's podcast. It's Ben Best from Dulscone Farm. Hello. Ben, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Excited, if I'm, <laughs> if I'm perfectly honest. It's uh, this is a, it's a big one for us. Like, I, I think, I think that you're going to topple Graham Parker as mm. our most watched Ooh, Big guest. statement. Ooh. It'll be a real test of who's got the, the biggest, following. most loyal following. Like no pressure then. Mate. How many followers do you have? Sorry, I'm going right in with a quick question. Yeah. 300,000 at the minute. Okay. There so, we go. So oh, look how disappointed Iona was. No, uh, I was I, I <laughs> Did you see that? Compared to Graham, it's like, wow. That's what I thought when you asked me the wow. question. Don't ask. <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just surprised why you <clears> think <throat> that Ben will get more views. Well, Ben's uh, type of format of social media, so it should very quick, let, let me, Ben, they'll scone farm, for anyone that doesn't know and has been living under a rock, they'll scone farm is, of course, where Fiona is now. That's I it. think that was, you were well known before that, but that certainly put you into the headlines and probably brought you into the the the, the limelight with, with certainly the farming community. Yeah, I um, agree. You know, That's everybody it. in farming will know of you now off the back of that. I think so, yeah. So you're welcome, mate. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> 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 should, thanks should, for that, Gary. <laughs> we'll get into that in a minute. <laughs> should we also just say for MD living under a titanium block, what who Fiona is? No. Okay. No, if okay. they don't know who Fiona is, then... F Fiona's the world's loneliest sheep. Yeah, okay. There we go. And how is Fiona? That's all. I, do you know what? How's Fiona? And then head up the road. Right. So many That's it. <laughs> yeah. Two and a bit hours in the car for that. Uh, yeah. yeah, she's doing great, thanks. Yeah. Amazing. She sends her regards. Uh, it's good, I miss her every day. We problem with Fiona, can he get her to stop putting on weight? Is that right? Really? Mm -hmm. Getting heavier that, all the time? That doesn't happen very often in farming, does it? No, no. <laughs> she was so, big, but she was big when she yeah, got she was Yeah, she was really big at the start. What was she, 92 kilos? 92, yep. Well, she'll be three or four kilos heavier, is that now, I think? Ah, jeez. I know, geez. it's a bit of a worry, but she's obviously got this bad leg. She still gets sore of that leg? Yeah. Mm. What does the vet say? Just joint. She's got a wee bit of her... She, her legs, her front legs, kind of turn in at the middle a wee bit, and I think that's not helping things. And oh, the weight doesn't help. And mm. I think it's it's one of those vicious circles. We need to get her out in a wee bit of grass. I think in the in the better weather, but we need the ground to harden up a wee bit. I, I think the sad thing is you probably need to starve her a little bit. I'm not saying starve her, but certainly cut off the feed and mm -hmm. let her fend for herself a bit. Yeah, it's a tricky one. Yeah, hard. The other thing is longevity as well. Like you know, it will affect her longevity if she's too heavy. You know, the, the oh, it's going to be bad in her heart for sure. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and arthritis on sheep is a big thing. You know, as they get older, mm -hmm. is another thing to think about. But you know, it's good she she's doing well. And of course, they'll go and farm really into a limelight off the back of the Fiona thing. We're going to get into all that in this podcast. It would be good though, uh, just to find out a bit before we begin about who Ben Best is. What's what's your story? What's the story? Um... So I kind of thought on the way on the way here, I kind of I thought you were going to go in this, and I was thinking on the road up, how how did I get to the fact of coming to do this podcast? And I think it's uh, through a series of failures. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's way arrived. Loads of bad luck. Yeah, um, I've kind of stumbled my way along, and I'm one of these people who does not fit into conformity at all. You know what's expected of you. I kind of shy away from that, and I'll try and make my own path. So. Um, Coming out of school, you know, with decent grades and never really struggled at school that much, so it was pretty lucky that way. But um, where do you grow up, Ben? Dumfries, right. on on Dulscon, so family farm. So um, I always wanted to go in the army, so the army was my route, and that was what I had my heart set on. So um, I was going into the parachute regiment, and I'd been well through that um, process when I was sixteen, heading there when I was seventeen, and that was the plan. Um, been down to Colchester and trained with the paras and done my taster weekend and everything. They were happy with that, passed all the tests. 
Uh, and then classic farmer, eczema, um, bad skin, got to selection in Edinburgh and uh, they packed my bags and sent me on the bus home that night. So uh, dad like had to come and, and pick me up and that was that was the end of that. Yeah. So, yeah. I can yeah. see it now. You're you're rubbing your hand there, but yeah, yeah I've got bad. I've got bad skin. I always have had bad skin. So um, why would that be an issue? Because you need steroid creams, and if you're oh. out in the field, then um, you're not going to have. You can't need medication. And when are parachuters used? Not very often now, but right. um, to be honest, the it's more a name as actual job. Yeah, is that well, right? it, I like a challenge, and it's one of the hardest um, between that and the Royal Marines is one of the hardest selection courses. Uh, not only in Britain, but I'd say in the, in the world. And my main reason for going for the parachute regiment is I was aiming high, I had big dreams. I was wanting to go from parachute regiment three or four years in there and then try and get into special forces. So that's the angle that I was trying to go okay. for. Um, and then a few years down the line after that, that didn't work out. I did try for the Royal Marines or I started um, selection for the Royal Marines as well, but things got busy on the farm and, and uh, yeah, we ended, up, we ended up here. So that's the kind of short way around it. It was supposed to be army or Royal Marines, and then uh, we ended up start going into the family farm. And then you know what it's like when you get into a family business. It's uh, it draws you in, doesn't it? And you come invested, and you don't want to leave. So it all worked out for the best in the end. That's for sure. And what was the setup at Dulscon at that point when you went back to the farm? Just farm park, growing farm park. So it was a farm park. Yeah, at that soft point. play area originally is how we started after foot and mouth. So foot and mouth kind of put the we got foot and mouth. Um, all animals were culled. And then after that, we started diversifying and going into the soft place when mum and dad had the idea. We were only 11 at the time, uh, or I was only 11. My brother was a wee bit older and my wee sister was really young. Um, so yeah, we, we started into the soft play and then opened a farm park, which was hardly anything there at the time. And then it's been, we're 20 years next month. So yeah, it's been a, it's been a massive period of growth and adjustment, um, mm -hmm. which has been kicked on by the social media side of things as well. Um, and the social media side of things, I know that's what we're known for now, but it's it's a, more or less a pretty recent thing. And I think it is a pretty recent thing for everyone, isn't it? Um, yeah, well, or certainly the way it, it's became popular in terms of like live streaming, which is, is your bread and butter. Uh, all these things are very, very new. Uh, and I suppose you, you're kind of, in not in danger, but I know why you're making that point there, because you've had 20 years of hard bloody work. Yeah, to, to get to where you are now, all of a sudden things are a little bit easier because mm -hmm. you have this income stream from social media that was never there before. No, before it was all just done through hard work. Whereas, yes, exactly, and I'm yeah. not saying for a second that live streaming and, and doing <clears throat> the social media isn't hard work, but it's not the stereotypical traditional farming hard work that you're used to. No, absolutely. You know, not, the no. can we pay the bills this month? Ah, uh, exactly. The grind. The grind. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Try to attract people in now. Once you have that big social media following, as you guys have, and, and, and tell us about where did that start? Who Whose idea was that? So uh, my dad, Farmer Pete, um, as he's known in social media, he started during COVID. And one of the things that kind of, it does kind of arc me sometimes, and like Visit Scotland had done a case study on us for how to get people from all over the world to come to Scotland and stay in the region. The Fries and Galloway is sometimes like the, it's the gateway into Scotland, isn't it? People just mm. pass through mm -hmm. on their way up to Edinburgh or the Highlands or wherever. Um, and they'd done a case study and they sent over uh, a couple of A4 pages of how do you think this sounds? And it, because of COVID, uh, Dulscon done this before, a co before COVID, uh, because of COVID, they, they went big on social media. And, and that kind of annoys me a wee bit because that is where we started, but that isn't where we were actually successful. So from s after COVID, but yes, we started there, but we had, you know, 50 to 70 people watching our live streams at most during COVID. Now everyone's in the house. No mm -hmm. one had anything to do. And we had about 20,000 Facebook followers at that stage. Mm -hmm. So we're minutely small uh, on the grand scheme of things. But, you know, that's where we started. And then it wasn't until 2021 that we got a viral video or big hit or big break, viral video of a donkey uh, giving birth. Uh, and it had 8 million views overnight. And that's when oh we started again. Yeah, I know it was crazy. What was that like? Uh, didn't really realise what it was until it happened. You know, I had no idea what was happening Did really. Did you think it was a horse or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's gone, it could be it's anything, full, to be It's honest. a full, all right, okay. Oh, you mean the video, sorry. Thanks, Cammy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so immature, I'm so immature. But yeah, so, it was now, a we shock. didn't, we didn't realise what was happening really at the time. I, I, remember, I woke up um, in the middle of the night, checked my phone, and it had like 
30,000 comments on it and it only went on four or five hours before. Uh, and I mind sending something into the family chat and saying, what's going on here? You know, 30,000. Mm. But we never knew what was going to actually come of that. Uh, and then global attention came from it and people wanted to know how to support us and we had to adjust really, really quick to all these people watching. So it was literally overnight. So, mm -hmm. so pre-2021, mm -hmm. you were just doing some live streams yeah. from the farm and that only started in 2020. Two or, two or three a week, yeah. My, my dad and my sister were doing some videos, some competitions and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a thing of the past now when social media has changed, you know, to grow your page, we used to do call competitions and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we got up to about 20,000 followers, all mostly local, um, and we're doing a few live streams. So it, it wasn't much an, at all, but now we're on live streaming daily basically um, yeah. and, and, and live streaming is a big new thing in social media like you know for a while it was YouTube was the original thing of course and there's that long form video on YouTube and I always say like you're, you're you, you got a very high quality audience in YouTube because they're generally sitting down to watch a longer video as opposed to you know flicking through something like TikTok etc yeah. but now the way it's going and probably because of TikTok because TikTok really brought the live Thing. I mean, you go in the live thing on TikTok, it's like an episode of Black Mirror. It's like people doing everything on, you know, you yeah. can flick through. Mm. It's crazy. Yeah, like, I mean, it sounds absolutely ridiculous, but like, <laughs> one that keeps coming up on mine, and this is going to sound ridiculous. Oh, God, can I? I know. I know. Where's so this going? Uh, but basically, these guys in Africa that are draining battery acid out of batteries. Right? Yeah. They're just like working in a, it's a sweatshop. I mean, it's like shocking conditions. Yeah. They're just in their flip flops and shorts and, and like a, a, an old ripped vest. And they're just like stabbing in with a knife into batteries and pouring it and collecting it. There must Sounds be. healthy. It, it's the, the worst working conditions. But they're like, they're actually making more from Why the. Yeah, because I'll, I'll look at the followers. Oh, definitely. Tens of thousands. Mm -hmm. So That's they're bad. actually. It's, they're now being able to get away out of which to me is absolute poverty to them maybe it's a, it's a great job but it looks like absolute poverty and terrible conditions to me but by showing people this incredible because I, I, you know every time it comes up I'll sit and watch for a couple of minutes just been like what is going on here how, it, yeah, how good have we got it yeah. and something you've never seen before well now you have yeah well it's just you, you, you forget with our perfect like, you know the, the UK has its issues mm -hmm. but if you actually think about a lot of the things we moan about here oh, like pot, potholes and and various other issues, it's it's nothing compared to, no. you know, the way some other people are living. And I think it really brings that home. And yeah, I'll sit and watch it for a bit. But TikTok live streaming, now Facebook live streaming is, is, is your main one, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just opened a whole new door to mm -hmm. how we can operate social social media. And I think with animal when it, animals are involved as yeah, well, it, yeah. it, it brings that sort of, um, you know, I don't know, just feeling like you're, you know them. Yeah. And when things are changing and stuff as well, I suppose when you're, well, the birth, like births are such a... Births are a big one, yeah. Yeah. But I think, there, you know, there's an element of risk to that. And I think a lot of a lot of people in the farming community who are, you know, who watch on our videos probably think we're mad for what we do, I think. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a lot you, of risk on it. You yeah, know, nothing's guaranteed. We're doing it live. There's maybe a two second delay between it going out to yeah. us filming it and going to, it, you know, Australia. And, and you're always yeah. going to have a big... I mean, I, I would think the Fiona thing has hopefully done wonders for that perception, but there'll always be that perception, per, perception in the farming community, oh, you're not really farming. And yeah. and in some ways, you're That's not. A big one it's face. very different, you know, but by the, the definition of farming, you are farming. Mm -hmm. And and the, the way I always put it to focus, what Del Scone did for farming during the whole Fiona debacle, when they were trying to take it, yeah. you know, the, the other guys were trying to get her to some petting zoo thing that they had set up. What you know, just going standing on its own, showing you know we are a farm here. Here's how we do things. We're open and transparent. We look after our animals, mm -hmm. as every farmer does. But like you show every element of it in a fantastic way, and I think it did wonders for farmers, if you ask me. Like, yeah. I, I, and I think like people so. like yourself mm -hmm. operating as farm parks, showing things done at such a high standard, so transparently, mm -hmm. it has to only be a good thing for farmers. Like, it has to be, surely. Yeah. What's the downside? Mm -hmm. it, exactly there shouldn't there shouldn't yeah. be one really no, no. do um, you suffer with negative comments on social media not not so bad you, i mean you get the odds you get the odd person you know that'll start a, f a fire here and there but you know on the whole we're really lucky with it um mm -hmm. we've got moderators on our page who are watching the comments you know i can't see all of them to come through and um, we'll be on for half an hour and have like five thousand comments you know you can't mm -hmm. you can't keep up with that no. and you can't physically actually see all them anyway so 
we've got moderators who do a great job and look after the page for us, but a sh- not, shout out to Ellis on the whole. Yeah, shout out to Ellis. She watches. Yeah. Your Dusconi is a bit upset if you don't give her a that's shout it. out. Um, so yeah, it's there's a whole team of moderators as well, but um, Ellis watches from the office and all the live streams and make sure everyone's behaving. Well, because one thing about your audience and to be fair, a lot of social media audience is, and and I know. I have a, a lot of Dosconis on uh, the Sheep game uh, as well now, and they're absolutely fantastic for engaging and stuff. But if I go back to my sort of police background, they're probably in that real target demographic for scammers. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and I know that Ellis is always watching out, mm. and, and actually your followers are really good at picking out scammers and yeah, saying, are, this yeah. guy's scamming, get him blocked. Because they're always targeting, and I hope you guys won't mind me, but they're always target, targeting a sort of, or not always, but cut off and targeting a sort of middle-aged Mm-hmm. female that they can pull on the heartstrings and say you know I need fifty thousand dollars to help with this problem and I'll come and see you mm-hmm. and you know you, you hear it all the time in the news so th- Facebook's rife for it like I'm constantly well, blocking you. people really? it's like well, hi, hi lovely I loved your profile send me a message Aye. all this chat mm. yeah we use the moderation assist now which is great is so, that like an AI on Facebook Aye, but you put in like um keywords like friend request or um send me a message perfect and that, oh, that so they can spam it all they want but it's not shown oh, and that's, and that's yeah. oh it's fantastic i'll send you I'll a list that. of the ones yeah, that we've yeah. got sorry i'll do it all good man you'd uh, you <laughs> i'll just give you a login just go on with me no need to send me any list um no it's been fast and, and one great thing as well like uh you know as many people who watch the podcast now know you're not know, very tight with graham as well so we have a real mm-hmm. link with social media and, and we chat a lot about the different yep. things we're doing yeah. so so graham's doing something d- totally different from me and that not totally different but he's a real viral video master oh he is you know his whole business is every video and i'm trying to viral. emulate him a wee bit yeah, it's just so difficult though because oh, he has that he's pimple the man, popper he? genius. He is the man. Where and then yours is certainly a live stream masterclass and how to build a business off live stream. And then I just take away just you have can. to do podcasts to try and scrape a living. E fishing for compliments. <laughs> yeah, no, I just I'm, I'm, I'm the one. Poor I'm the one that still has to get. I have to get scanning and cheering off someone in winter just to tape scrape your by. pickup up. Just, I tape the bumper up and all that. Like it's difficult, isn't it? <laughs> for anyone, anyone in the audio I've got my violin out now one of the hardest things when I was trying to get into farming is nobody talks about yeah. money no it's like it's a dirty dirty word mm-hmm. you yeah. know and it, it's it's like I got asked in a podcast I did a podcast with Herdwatch please uh, check it out it'll be out by now um, so we use Herdwatch uh, yeah uh, Herd, there we go another endorsement at Herdwatch great apps really simple to use what and it? uh, it's just a, it's a livestock well it's a old farm recording app you can do cattle sheep I think you can probably do goats on it as well. I don't know. Can you? You can uh, you just no. treat them as sheep. Treat them as sheep. Same your tags, um, and you can do like arable and all that stuff. Just uh, recording all all your stuff about your farm. But one of the questions she asked me what I thought about um, it was Katie was asking more about these people that are saying you know cut the farmers' subsidies more so the kind of argument in Wales at the moment and and I'm partly for her in Ireland as well, mm-hmm. cut the farmers' subsidies, rich farmers type thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I spoke about how I have issue with that because the, they're saying it like a slur and the way that they're making out as if rich farmers, as if, like, you know, they've got all this cash and they're, they're buying Ferraris and uh, blowing money wherever they like, like as if they're, like, rich footballers. Mm-hmm. But I was making the point, like, that money that goes to farmers, like, the farmers just put it all back into farming. It's all back into the local economy. They spend, spend, spend. Yes, a lot of them are asset rich, mm-hmm. but really cash poor. And we talk about that a lot on here. Yeah. And I actually wanted to say that I would describe myself as rich. Mm-hmm. You know, recently we looked at potentially getting a farm. And, okay, the numbers didn't add up just now. We're hopefully maybe another year we'll be getting closer to it. But when we worked out, like, my assets, mm-hmm. I had over, like, 300 grand worth of assets mm-hmm. in terms of selling the sheep and other things we've got, probably slightly more than that. And, and as a 33-year-old, it's unreal. Aye. If I could just sell everything and buy a 300 grand house mortgage free at 33 years old, pfft, I know, it's that's rich. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's all about perspective. You know, that, like we go back to the boys with the batteries. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. How would, like, to, to them, it's all about perspective. Yeah. You know, to them, like, I'm a millionaire. You know, I'm that's the, that's a dream. Whereas then I look at somebody, like, even the Asil Ben, big farm part there, really good going business, great social media following, booming. You're the next step on for me again. And it's like, but it's all about your perspective. It's about being yeah. realistic. So I'm like, yeah, 
am rich. Yes, a lot of farmers are rich, but not in the derogatory way that people are saying farmers are rich. No, you can be a rich farmer <clears throat> and be living in your overdraft. Exactly. But I think, though, saying that and people saying, oh, they're keeping all the, you know, the perception is they're keeping it in their bank account or they've yeah. got a brand new Range Rover, that there's a reason why, if there's a recession, the first thing the government do is introduce grants to farmers. Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. they blow it. Yeah, they'll take it and blow it and get the economy going. That's well, where yeah, it all starts. Well, I yeah, see Ga Gareth Wynne Jones put on social media this week that every pound given in subsidies to a Welsh farmer returns nine pounds to the the economy. Lo the economy. Wow. Has to be right, surely. Yeah. That's believe that. Yeah, yeah. In terms of the food you produce, I, hey, we, we we could go on about this forever on this podcast, but it's there's never a a, a a farmer that I know of that gets his subsidy and phones his bank on the Cayman Islands and says, hey, "I've got some more money to stash over there that I don't need." <laughs> It just doesn't no. happen. You know, it just all gets spent and that's the great thing about it. But yeah, that was my kind of point on that podcast. I'm hoping actually it comes across okay. I think it will. Um, but yeah, it, it is a bit perspective as well. Yeah, but, 100%. Uh, folk don't like top money. And I know your situation, the social media, I know it will be doing well. Now, I'm I'm not expecting you to, to tell me at all about that, but it must have a massive influence on where yeah. you go with the farm park. Like it, for one, the pressure must be off massively with getting folk through the gate. Yeah, it helps, yeah. Definitely helps. Yeah. No, uh, last year, probably up about 30%, I would say, in numbers. Wow. Uh, through the gate. Yeah. How many How well, How many visitors do you get, roughly? Uh, about 120 to 130,000 a year. Wow, that's so huge. Is, how does that compare to other businesses like yours? I think probably it's hard because it depends what type, what, what you know, region you're in. Mm -hmm. Some of these farm parks down in London, Essex Way are, you know, 200,000, mm. quarter of a million, you know, they're absolutely massive. Yeah. But, you know, when we're up in rural Scotland, you're you're in a smaller pool of people. But now with social media, people are travelling from all over to come to us. So it's great. You know, it's, it's really good. Have you seen a big increase in that from people travelling? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, people are coming from all over the world. Really? You know, Australia, Hawaii, Alaska, California, Florida. And is this all since Fiona? No, oh, no, no, it's before. Oh, right, it's just okay, like sorry, the social media. Right, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, this was last summer. Right, okay. Fiona's only really, really, really recent. Sure, you know, it's been closed the whole time Fiona's been there. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. she just went there yeah, in November so the farm or part, December. The farm park wasn't open, uh, or opens on 25th of March. Right, okay. But yeah, in terms of in terms of the farm park, you know, in the last two years, it's probably put us 10 years ahead of where we would be. Jeez. That's amazing. Yeah, it's just it's the power of social media, isn't it? Oh, it's great. But and I, I do say, you know, uh, your format, again, is, is very different to myself and Hoof GP in that a lot of yours is direct, uh, they call it like stars, and direct donations, essentially, towards... Uh, what you're doing towards mm -hmm. the animals, various other things, buying uh, merch that you do as well and all these things. But the great benefit for folk that are doing that is they see it back because yep. like, like other farms, it all goes into the farm park. So if, they, if they're if they sending you stars or, or money in some way, you're building a new enclosure for this animal. Mm. You're uh, improving the facilities for that animal there. You're putting a new shed up or you've not long yep. done the new shed. You know, things are moving forward all the time. You have more time to do videos because, you know, let's be honest, it's, it's very worth your while doing them. So you're going to do more videos so they're going to get more content <coughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. off the back of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, it is a win-win. And everything that, you know, any revenue that comes off social media, we put straight back into the farm park. I mean, you can yeah. see that we've put another big shed up, uh, two big sheds up this year um, off the back of just doing another, another two big ones where Fiona is just now. So um, we're investing all the time trying to make things better for the family business and for our employees and for our animals as well. So mm -hmm. um, we've got a great team at Dulscon. You know, we want to look after them, make sure they've got some longevity and some job security as well. So that all helps with that. You know, the, mm -hmm. the better attraction that we can make it, the better for everyone. And, you know, make hay while the sun shines because you don't know how long the social media game is going to last. So true. Yeah. Um, and for example, in October, all our revenue just stopped. Mm -hmm. Same as, same as uh, the Hoof GP. He had it for about three weeks, was it? Yeah, month. we'll sure they started a whole new Facebook page and stuff because they were they were they were <coughs> stopping so the. So why did they stop it? I don't think they ever it's actually found out. Yeah, yeah. he had a glitch. Oh, no. We had a glitch. We only had f uh, four days, I think, we lost it for, but it's still terrifying. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. we've got people employed off the back of that, and it was going to be job cuts, etc. Um, and for a small, relatively small team, that's yeah, yeah. So it'd be, it would have been devastating for us. Um, but you know, it was a, it was a lesson that. You know, don't put all your eggs in one basket, and that's what we tried to. That's what we tried to do, and we're trying to spread our wings on other social media platforms. But we struggle a wee bit because we went so big so quick on one. You know, we never got the chance to 
to almost grow naturally in all of them. Yeah. We just went massive on one. And then it was obviously monetized. And um, if you're taking exclusive content from the one that's monetized to the smaller one, you know, you're you're losing. Diluting it too much. You're, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you're just diluting it. And, you know, again, with people employed off of it, you can't lose too much kind of thing. So it makes it difficult, I think. Uh, we're trying, but mm -hmm. it still makes it difficult. And was the farm park standing at its own two feet? Without social media, was it still? Oh a yeah, yeah. Was, it, was it a pretty strong business? Well, we're we're twenty we're twenty years in. Yeah, of course, of course. But you know, what I mean more is is was it a strong business? You know, was it making good money or was it was it just getting by before social it's media? It's not just it, getting it? by. It was always doing okay. Like, yeah. We're always comfortable. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's that's. that's but good you know, though. you're not. No one's going to be millionaires off of it. Contrary to what you know, pass by the car park and there's three hundred cars in the car park on on a few weeks in the summer. But that's. That's only three weeks in the summer. That covers your winter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you, you still carry all your staff over and you get really quiet days. And it's surprising how quick it, it kind of gets munched back up again. But you need your you need your really busy times to level out the really quiet times as well. So, uh, yeah, the farm part was great and it, it supported as well. But it's um, it was never going to make everyone, you know, millionaires by any stretch of the imagination. You'd always be in a, an all right house with a, a modest car and that, you know, just the same as anyone else, really. Being mil millionaires overrated, honestly. Do you think so? <laughs> just look at Graham. He's not any happier than the rest of us, is he? <laughs> just look at your pickup. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> look at your owner's dad. Do you know what I mean? He didn't look that excited. Um, but no, it's, it's a good... One thing I'm going to ask you, though, is you don't open on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Is that not crazy? Why do you not open on a Sunday? Tell us the reason. Because uh, our family go to church. Yeah, so you're a religious, uh, quite a religious family. Well, mum and dad and we sister go to church. We've got... Um, I've not went in a went in a few years, but it's um it's the sinning, mate, the sinning. That's unreal. <laughs> what do they call it? Is it sinning if you don't go to church? Is it a sin if you don't go to church on a Sunday? No, I don't think so. No, I don't know. I don't think so. Does it but anyway, do, they, do they not give you a row for it? Who? Like see when you go in, you've not been for a few weeks. God. <laughs> well, maybe no God, but the the I think they're more um, pleased to see you, I think. The Reverend. I is think that a Reverend? I think you're more priest. pleased to see you. Minister priest. A minister. A minister, minister. minister. Is the minister not like, hey, where have you been, son? No, he's pleased to see you. Ah, that's good, that's good. He's yeah. happy to see you there. Always oh. encouraging. I like it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, that's why we don't that's why we don't open on a Sunday and that's what everyone says, you know. It's quite unusual, eh? For yeah. for something that's an attraction for children. You know, when they're off school at weekends, yeah. that's yeah. And that was that always the case? Yeah, that's the, that's for twenty years. Way, that's been the case. Yeah, that's been the case. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I wondered if maybe it was because social media was supporting you enough, you could drop the Sunday. No, but no. it's always no. been a Sunday. If there's all, if there, if we're open on a Sunday, if we're open on a, a like if we're to choose one day to close, a Sunday wouldn't have been it anyway. You know, if we ever opened a Sunday and we were going to close one day, it yeah, wouldn't have been a Sunday. You know, yeah, it'd be yeah, like yeah. a Tuesday. Yeah. 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 But uh, no, we've always no, but done sorry, that. I mean, I mean, that my initial thought was that of, there was a religious element, mm -hmm. and that now you had the, the opportunity to exercise that religious um, going oh, to I church. See what you mean, yeah, yeah. Before you, you know, like nobody, nobody would, uh, no, was, nobody would score a religious person for missing church if they have to do it to survive their business. Oh, absolutely. Whereas I thought maybe social media gave you the the, the luxury of it, yeah. eye of of doing no. that. But no, okay. that's not the case. We've always done it and uh, always got on all right without it. So. Um, yeah, we'll just we will always do it now because everyone has a family day now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's of even, course your kids. Well, your even, son at school yet, but you know, yeah, for anyone with kids. Well, we do swimming lessons yeah. on a Sunday morning. Where I go in swimming lessons on a Sunday morning with Florence. You know, you wouldn't want you to get the hang of it yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's still does trying she to get my arms off does me. She help you all right? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it was, you know, you get that wee bit of family time and you know that you've got that day. Mm -hmm. And it's also different, isn't it, when the whole place is shut? Yeah. Like, even, you know, that's different. Well, mum and dad live on site. Mum, mm -hmm. dad and Alice, my wee sister, live on site. So if you never, you can't, you'd live in a goldfish bowl, you'd never get a rest. And you'd always end up out there. Mm -hmm. You know, you just get drawn out there anyway. So if you don't have it shut, you'll not get a rest. And you yeah. need to have a rest. Yeah. There's something you know. Yes, you could make a wee bit more money, but sometimes you have to value your your wee bit of time that you've got on the Sunday as well. Hundred percent, absolutely. And on the, the the mention of rest, let's have a quick word from our sponsors. Crystalix Extra High Energy Feed Blocks have been providing high energy supplementation to ewes, lambs, and rams in the UK since 1978. 
packed full of protein, vitamins, minerals, and trace elements, Crystalix Extra High Energy has been proven to increase live lamb numbers and improve lamb daily live weight gain at a cost of only four to seven pence per U per day. To view the full Crystalix range and find your nearest stockist, visit crystalix-global.com. Great stuff there. Do make sure, by the way, if you go and get any Crystalix or Animax trace your boluses that you mentioned you heard it here on Fed by Farmers because we've had feedback already from them that really? yeah, yeah, people have been buying the bolus after Stop seeing it on it. here. Yeah, so make sure you keep doing that so we can ask for more money next year. <laughs> um <laughs> now I have an interest in few and Iona knocks me down all the time, but <laughs> I like the idea of this coffee shop soft play. Okay, let's just reverse a wee bit. I don't knock no, me knock down. No, knock me down's harsh, but you calm me down and say... Yeah, because you would open it tomorrow. Pump the brakes. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I'd put a blow up bouncy castle in and then, like, yeah. a, a, you know, bring in a couple of flasks and be like, come on. <laughs> Dress as a clown. <laughs> Coffee shop. Co a, bit like a Willy Wonka experience that made the news the other week. Oh, my God. That was Aye. so That's funny. blew up, isn't it? Oh, it my was, God. I think it was, like, one of the, and my kids only got two jelly babies and half a can of limeade. Uh, <laughs> some of the... <laughs> it just made me laugh. <laughs> some of, of the, course it's limeade when you're in Glasgow, isn't it? <laughs> what, limeade? Oh, that's like a, or it's pineapple that was the only thing left in the vid shop during the apocalypse. Oh, was it? Uh, that episode where uh, actually uh, the actually powers right. when all the power goes out, all that's left in the it's shop is pineapple. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've sort I've seen some videos from it as well. It was absolutely shocking. But the soft play thing, does it work? Like, is is there a would would you, there be money in it? Just doing like if we set up a cafe here and had a soft play thing, is it is it worth doing? What's the pitfalls of it? Talk me through it. I don't think so. Right. I think those days, I think soft play is almost becoming a thing of the past. Okay. <gasps> that surprises me. Mm -hmm. COVID was a big nail in the coffin. There's a lot of them uh, up and down the country that have just gave up. Really? Yep. Is that because they stopped wanting to go in confined spaces? and? Uh, I think so. And then they got a bad perception that from MPs, um, a lot of them had said they stink of pee and they're disgusting and <clears throat> I wouldn't go into them regardless of COVID. And, I think they got a bit of a slap in the wrist about that, but um, yeah, that was a, a big nail in the coffin mm -hmm. for them. They struggled and didn't come back out the, the other side of it. Um, and yeah, I just I think it's going to become a thing of the past. I mean, we're fine because we've obviously got the soft play and the yeah, and yeah. the farm park, and we're a bit established. But um, I think just stand alone, I think you'd really struggle. But with a coffee shop cafe attached to it, better just doing the cafe. Aye. I don't know. Do you say cafe or cafe? I would say cafe because I don't want cafe. to sound like a... Hey, why am I saying cafe? I don't know. You don't, cafe. You don't sound like someone that says cafe. I know. Why am I saying <laughs> You're that? You're not somebody that says cafe. Cafe. That was weird for me. You've not got yeah. the accent for cafe. No. Can't pull it off, can we? Look, aye. The cafe. Caf. The, co <laughs> the coffee shop. <laughs> uh, so, so, but That's on it. its own. I mean, selling coffees must be profitable. Selling coffees all right, yeah. But then, see, with the soft play, you're drawing in the mums yeah, with the okay. babies. But These are the texts ben, I get from ben. Cami, by the way, everyone. This is the text I get from Cami. Christmas Eve. I'm wanting to start a coffee shop. How much money do I need? I'm like, Cami, it's Christmas Eve. It was actually Christmas Eve. Just had it's, this mad thought. It's, it's Christmas Eve. I'm like, so it's like, that is so being weird. the good friend that I am, I was like, right, what is it you're wanting to do? Is it secondhand stuff you want to get? Is it is it new stuff? I was, I was trying my best, like. Oh, yeah, that's right, I remember. I actually thought to myself, maybe I should wait till after then. I'm like, no, I can't wait. I can't sit on it. I can't I can't sit on an idea. What am I like with you? I'm no. just spouting nonsense, man. Uh, and that's what I'm saying. I always talks me down. I thought, I'll just throw it out there and see what he says. No, but I, I definitely don't. I'm, I, I do see there a gap. Well, <laughs> what, what about, we're, we're going to open a shop in here. Okay, like doing obviously sheep game fed by farmers, all the other stuff we do, and they'll scorn merch. They'll scorn merch, of, of course. course. Um, we'll have like better craft, ridge line, do all that kind of popular mm -hmm. uh, outdoor wear that farmers enjoy. I was thinking, like, it would really nail it, like Tarfit Dumfries. Yeah, like their big one with the coffee shop mobbed. Mm -hmm. You stick, oh, a, yeah, you, stick you stick a cafe, really simple. God, there it goes again. There it goes again. <laughs> I don't know. Why am I saying cafe like that? It's okay, Why am I saying cafe? It's okay darling. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I saying cafe? I think we're going to have to edit this out. I know, cafe. <laughs> a cafe. Cafe. It's what the are nerves, you I know, it's I don't nerves. know what's happening. <laughs> I know. I I is that, this what? That, hold on. Why am I saying This cafe? is why. The last time I came in this office, there wasn't any of this fancy, fancy 
it's nice, nice, yeah, nice yeah. Oh, it's really nice. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, and I was sitting across the other side of the desk <laughs> from Cami, and we're discussing business and um, some of the the merch that we're going to release and stuff. And Cami was sitting on this beautiful chair, this nice big chair here. Is like just take a wee seat the other side of my desk. So he sits down in the big chair higher than me, <laughs> and gave me a a camping chair. <laughs> He gave me a camping chair that scouts would use if they went to, you know, they went on a weekend excursion. So I was sitting, I was sitting like this in the wee camping chair and Cammy was towering above me and I was like, this is some Donald Trump stuff here. Ma- this is mindset. psychology. This is mindset. business psychology. <laughs> but there's a worse one though. It's it, it, sitting in the boxes. Yeah. No, but like that was a, uh, have a seat in my wee chair while I sit and look up. But there's a great sketch in Burnison that is very Scottish. Thing. In fact, we'll cut it into the, the YouTube podcast. The, the girl brings in her boyfriend and she says, uh, I need to get. I'm not finished getting ready. Uh, just go into the living room uh, and sit with my dad and all my mad uncles. <laughs> and, and he walks. He walks in. This wee guy and it's her dad and and all these mad uncles and they're like mental. <laughs> and they just grab this wee pink chair. And it's like have a seat. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got to sit. There. Like, <laughs> he's got to sit in the wee chair while they are sitting the sofa. <laughs> it's so good. Anyway, that's what it was like. Um, but no, right. Okay, so we're gonna open a cafe. Um, <laughs> Uh, we're I still, that's still in the cafe. Uh, 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 I would and, say, but I'll have the farm shop with it. I think it, you know. Oh yeah, I think it works, man. I think folk like a good. Coffee. I would. Yeah. I would say stay clear the stay clear soft, the soft play. Yeah. Plus injuries. What, what about, about it's not injuries? Really, it's not, not so injuries. much injuries. It's that uh, well, kids always get injured, don't they? And whatever. They don't get claims. Digby Brown. No, no, we're lucky enough. I mean, I don't. I mean, should we say that? Or <laughs> oh, you want, I, uh, do you want to go into the claim? Don't, uh, there is no claim. <laughs> There is no claim. It's your Wayne's own fault. Wayne's are flexible. They don't get hurt. Oh the same. yeah, and I think you always just blame blame the Wayne. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Ah, right, that stands right. up in court. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like need right, to get like, Iona as my solicitor. <laughs> it's like, look, look at him. Like, what's he? Look at him. He's, look how thick he looks. Um, what about <laughs> just starting small and just having a bouncy castle? No, that's bouncy castles are the most dangerous of them all, aren't they? Look yeah. at look at that guy. He, he did the bouncy castle hire and then one blew up and bloody killed somebody. For goodness sake. Ken. Did it really? Aye. Right. Bouncy castles no. are dangerous. Also, one blew away. Remember? Or maybe it was that. It blew away with a kid on it. Blew away with a kid. I think it was kids in it. Yeah, it actually oh blew away my. across the beach like 40 foot high. Mm. That's awful. Yeah, no bouncy castle. Coffee shop. Right, got that nailed. So what's the future for Doscoin? What else is going to happen? The future, we have Small Animal Experience opening this year. And that is 25th of March, hopefully. Um, we're going to be opening that. So what is that? So... It's a new avenue that we're going into and we opened it last year and we, you could do animal handling where we had uh, rabbits and guinea pigs and you could hold like a lizard or mm. um, what else did they have? We turtles and tortoises and stuff. All the kids yes. could come in and, and hold them. Um, but now we've kind of expanded on that and we've built a purpose-built shed. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, there'll be a lot on our social media about that. Uh, we've actually got monkeys now. <gasps> yeah. Mate. I need to I bring know. my nieces down. Monkeys, as in like the ones, the one out of friends, the, like Marcel, the wee cool uh, guy. That kind of, them. yeah. They're uh, marmosets, so they look like wee old men with the grey hair at the side. Right. Okay. Yeah. Or like, very cool. Or like me. Yeah. Yeah. And are they, <laughs> are they pet ones? Yeah. Yeah. So they, <gasps> but you're not letting folk hold them, are you? No. 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 Because it'd be dangerous. Um. Well, no, when Craig, when then Craig, wouldn't like it. Craig, a small animal guy, when he goes into the the pen, they like jump all over him and eat out his hands and stuff. So. Wow. We've got monkeys, we've got armadillos. My boys are like that. Armadillos. We've got porcupines. I go. I've, I've actually been twice pre- oh, yeah. pre-COVID, yeah, when I lived in Dumfries. There you no go. No way. Yeah. Just yourself? No ex-boyfriend's nephew. Right, okay. Yeah. That's strange. Yeah. Why is that strange? I don't know. Oh, right. <laughs> That's you have great. to come back down. You come no, no. come back down and see us. <laughs> yeah, I would, I'd love to. Man, yeah. I'm so miserable. That. I'm like, I just want to do something like that. What? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> Do it with your ex-boyfriend's the nephew. Like, yeah, well, obviously, my it wasn't your ex-boyfriend then. No, was that he? would be weird. Oh, that's, that that's would weird. be weird. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, shout out to him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's his name? Let's give him a shout. Still out. looking. <laughs> still looking. <laughs> yeah. We'll take nephews to uh, farm parks. So there's any dull scoring great with family. Single with family. people. That's I own is free. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is your what, your audience? <laughs> I, mean, I, what, what, I want to talk about the meerkats actually as well. They have meerkats. Wow. That's my oh, favorite prairie thing. dogs. That's what else we've got. They're new. Have you heard of a prairie no, dog? Yeah. It? You know the one. You know the. You know on the animal programs, the guys that we the wee tiny things that stand up and they go, Alan, Alan, Alan. Yes, yes. Them. Al, Al, yeah. Al. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's them. 
Yeah, no, the meerkats are probably my favourites. Uh, just favourite animal of all time? No, no, they're just going. Right. It's just something you don't see. Yeah, they're just such personality. What are your feelings on reptiles? Not really my thing. Not my thing. Do you, ha- you have some you reptiles, do you? Yeah, we've got quite a big reptile range yeah. now, yeah. It's, it's not my thing, but like, I understand it. Snakes, like snakes. Oh, folk nah, always want to see. Thing, folk always want to see snakes, yeah. don't they? Because some people are mad, like obsessed with reptiles. Like really, some people into have them. them in their house. Oh, that's yeah. Nah. No. No. Like I'd hold a snake. Like I would do. Uh, generally it. speaking, see if. Yeah, but it's holding a snake and having it in your house is two different things. Yeah, yeah. Like, generally speaking, like in my best back to my bit. Like if I was, if I went to someone's house and they had like one of these like heated rooms and mm. and loads and loads of reptiles, I'd probably want to you know have a look at their browsing history. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I just it, a lot of red flags start coming up for okay. me. Okay. Yeah. 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 There we go. Something to think about. <laughs> I'm Big so, shit. Yeah, someone is going to be offended. I know shit. Cut that out. Aww. Big shout out to our reptile fans. No, yeah. <laughs> listen, I'm just saying it's a joke. Can I'm doing. Can I take a joke? Yes. <laughs> I love reptiles. Okay, so you've got a small animal thing coming forward. Uh, what else is happening? Um... I've actually... This is maybe something for your live streaming as well. That we should talk about. I'm going to start live streaming at Lamin Time. Can I just say that's. I'm going to do a live stream. Same time as us? or No, no. I mean, are you just trying to. No, no, because like, that's like middle of the day for me, 6 36. No, no. I, I, I'd be going. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was thinking I can't do the morning rounds because, well, for one, it's usually it's quite Too dark. Busy. And yeah, you're flat out. And the morning rounds is where the cat real carnage happens because when you're outdoor lambing, they've not been yeah. checked all night. But what I was thinking is once that's you. That's where the content is. Yeah, but also that's my YouTube will cover that, you know. Um, whereas in the lighting's horrible, you know, when it's dark and you're rushing about. Whereas once you're, you've done your morning rounds, you can start dealing with the problems. We could do a live stream for an hour a day, like 11 o'clock every day or something, do half an hour or an hour. Just see how it goes, you know. That's how you guys started, just consistency. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Consistency and persistency. I actually done a talk for uh, South of Scotland Enterprise last week. And that was one of the points that I'd said on social media and how to help. I love helping other businesses i know cami likes helping people as well and doing talks and things but you know like helping other businesses with their social media because i've said this to cami before Mm -hmm. when we were first starting out and i was trying to figure out social media and it takes a lot of figuring out i think and you learn a lot of things along the way i would have loved to have had a me to say you know that's what i text cami a lot i text graham Mm -hmm. um the hoof gp to you know see how things are going um any tips or how do you get over this or what's what's working well um, but so I, th- actually, I think there are a lot of businesses like yours listening to this. Uh, for example, I was at a place called Farm Stop uh, the other week up Aberdeenshire Way or Port Lethen, I think was the, mm-hmm. the correct area. And really well set up business, very similar to yourself, just a much smaller scale at the moment. Mm-hmm. But they will no doubt be listening to this thinking, mm, live streaming. Yeah. You know, good way. Cannon Hall is another big business that does it a lot, mm-hmm. um, very similar to yourself. Like, I, there's definitely something there in the social media and making people feel part of the business and, and, ah, and part, and, of, the, and part, part of, of the family. team. Yeah. 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 Um, and, you know, <clears throat> question for you then, when we're talking about the success of social media, in terms of net profit, bear in mind how expensive a farm is to run, is your social media making more than the farm part? Uh, net? Not mm. Once your costs are out? Not far off. Yeah. That is the, the best thing about social media, apart from your time. There's no cost, mm-hmm. you know. So how does monetization on Facebook work? Is it like just based like, on views? Just like YouTube. Yeah, you have to get so many views to be accepted. Yeah. And then is it like you get paid so much per, per view? Uh, it, it, it's very variable as well. Right, okay. Um. Yeah, it's to do with like adverts on, on the streams and... Uh, like, CPM, yeah, and it was just like your clicks per milli or something like that. Every thousand views gets you so many. Um, but depending on your content, depends what kind of advertisers you get. Depends if you're oh, doing finance, okay. if you're doing finance or business type content, you get a lot more money than doing farming content. Right. Okay, um, that's interesting. So though Ben might have more viewers than some people doing um, business type videos, yeah, they'll make a lot more money per view because. My businesses want to advertise to that type of mm-hmm. of of viewer. Uh, interesting. Yeah, so like farming isn't that exciting a or place for advertisers. Yeah, it's quite niche, and and, and uh, you know people watching farming content, say like sheep game or whatever. The type of businesses that work within farming have nowhere near the marketing budgets. No. That 
your big business, your cryptocurrency folk, like they're they're huge and throwing money into adverts because mm. I try to brainwash everyone into that kind of side of things. Whereas they're not really targeting the folk watching farming videos. They're targeting the folk watching yep. like videos titled Get Rich Quick or I started a business and turned it into a million pound enterprise within a month. Yeah. I've watched all of them. <laughs> I know, wait, they catch me out too. <laughs> Always a lot of nonsense. None of them work. No, I was a lot of nonsense. Click lost bait. a lot of money. Clickbait, <laughs> clickbait. Well, you're both a lot further on than me. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I just start oh, watching. Hey, just live streams, live streams. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's there were loads of businesses listening to this thinking, give it a go. It's getting the balls to do it. It's Starting it off, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's getting the bravery. That was one of my up. points on um, actually... The, basically, the title of the talk that I done the other day was uh, "Little Acorns Grow Into Mighty Oaks," because not one social media platform has started with a million followers or ten thousand mm. followers. They started from zero. Yeah. So, although you might be a little acorn at the start, look what you can grow into, and mm. look what, like, yeah. say yourself has done. Look what we've done. Um, look what Graham's done. You know, it's it's amazing the potential and how quick you can grow. All you need is that that one break. And it doesn't matter if it's a if it's a donkey that's given birth, if it's a sheep that's lambing, if it's a pygmy goat. We had a pygmy goat uh, went viral. Pygmy goat video went viral in Iraq and Egypt last month mm. and got 14 million views. Um, cool. But although that's not really doing much for our page, bringing in the ad revenue, yeah, you know, and that's really important for keeping okay. the business going, investing back into our stock and uh, our content, and you know, it, yeah. it, it all works hand in hand. But, you know, you just need that big break to get started. And that's what I always try and preach to people. And that's one of my main points as well is networking. You know, networking, look at the doors that it opens. Mm-hmm. You know, come to, send us a message. Do you want to do, you want to do something? Or I've got this, whatever. Uh, would you be interested in the farm? I can bring it down. We can do a wee bit of filming. That kind of thing. People can only say no. Look at Cam, he never got back to me at the start. <laughs> but I didn't say no. And then... And that is the important thing. And then... You end up with the world's loneliest sheep. I mean, it's an extreme example, yeah, but it's still so the true, same though. thing. Yeah, so if, so I hadn't, so if, if I hadn't spoke to you at the Highland Show, we wouldn't have had the world's nope. loneliest sheep around. No, that, that that would never happen. No, absolutely. Um, and, and because you are kind of out with the normal farming circles, if it's oh, well, that is fair to say, you know, there is the the, the possibility I might never have picked up on it. You know, mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah. If you hadn't came and spoke to me, and the big thing with Fiona thing, maybe some people. I think I have covered it a little bit, but we'd want to know how you ended up uh, getting the Fiona thing. When I initially agreed with the farmer to go up and get her, the big thing with him was, I mean, he was already shaken up at this point by mm. all these strange people on his land and making, you know, real issues for him. He wanted Fiona to go somewhere else, you know, that wasn't on his farm because these mm. people were going to hound him, basically to, to get her away. But having looked into where they were suggesting she goes, he wasn't happy, and quite rightly so. Like, it, you know, we don't want to get into too much of that, but and it, I've was, it was, it was since, unsuitable. I've spoke to him since, and he said, you know, there's not a chance, no matter what, that, that Fiona was going to go there. No, because you look at the pictures on social media, it's hellish. Like, they don't know how to look after animals for a start. No. But that's another story. So I, I, I thought, right, I need somewhere for Fiona to go once we've got her up safely, that basically is open and transparent and everyone can see. Because there's a lot of daft comments, like, one thing about uh, Facebook and, and these things is a lot of people start typing before they act, you know, their fingers go before their brain does. So, you know, and a lot of them, there was farmers commenting going, a lot of, on the farming forums, a lot of nonsense, don't know why they just throw it out in a field, causing all this hassle, blah, blah, blah taking her to the score or whatever. It's like, you imagine if I just went and got Fiona, right? Brought her back to Irsha and flung her out with the rest of my house, and then everyone's going, where is she? And I'm like, Ugh, I'm not telling you. She's mm-hmm. everybody. You imagine the hassle. Yeah. I'd a, you know, I'd have been getting death threats for these folk. Yeah. Like, like they'd have been camped outside my house. I tell you what they'd be saying. Oh, they've taken them straight. They've they butchered them yeah. straight to the slaughterhouse. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So these yeah. folk spouting that nonsense. That like they're just they've been stupid. They're to nothing. Be like they've got the had, same. They've got the same narrative, somewhere, don't they? Everybody could see the whole time. That's what it is. The whole time. Are you slaughtering them? Slaughterhouse. Yeah. Slaughterhouse. Yeah. Slaughterhouse. Mm-hmm. That's that's the that's the main narrative that they're yeah. pushing the whole time. Yeah. So it had to be somewhere that folk could keep up to date with her all the time. And it was like, Ben. Yeah. So can I, the way it worked for us, do you, well, I say my... Ah, you do so your part. I, I don't like the way you tell our story shit enough, but you're a bit too... <laughs> I don't think you're cheery enough, but anyway, there you go. 
Oh, it's a good wind up, and it gets some trigger him. It's not often you can get Cammy. Well, I've seen it for the first time. Quite proud of myself. I work so hard to be nice all the time. Mission accomplished. Back down the road. Just runs me down. So, from my point of view, when Cammy actually phoned me at the time, I think this was the Friday. You rescued on the Saturday, Cammy. Is that right? I think that's right. Yeah. So, yeah, he'd phoned me on the Friday. And I was out working with our sheep, our lambs at the time. And uh, I said, hello, how are you doing? I know bad. I've got a big opportunity for you. And I actually thought that you were going to say something about the TV. Mm. I thought we were going to do something on oh, TV. Or Landward or something. No, well, yeah. not even for Landward. I thought there, you'd maybe got a, a, a thing that we were going to go and do a presenting thing or something along those lines. Yep. Um, it's the kind of first thing that came to mind. And he said, I'm going to rescue the world's loneliest sheep. I'm <laughs> heading up there right now. Uh, and I want to bring her to you. And I was like... My first thought, actually, was, is this the ultimate hospital pass in rugby? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, no thing in Cammy here. I mean, what an opportunity for us. But it's such a lot of pressure mm-hmm. because you know how unreliable sheep are, don't you? Yeah. And just to clarify, a hospital pass for anyone that's wondering is when someone passes you the ball and then you get nailed straight away because yeah. it's a bad pass. In rugby. Um, so... Ben suggesting getting past Fiona and he'd get nailed straight away. But yeah, that's that's an analogy. It's kind of a, an accurate analogy. Very do you good. know, do you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? You know, it's um, it's, it was just a worry because we didn't know what condition she was going to be mm-hmm. in at the time. Um, we didn't know what she'd been like, what her mental health was like, really. Because I know it's ridiculous, or it's not so ridiculous talking no, about the mental she's, health. She's of not sheep, been socialized with her. She's sheep. not been yeah. Yeah. socialized with anyone. Is she going to be almost a bit stir crazy? Because mm-hmm. who would have blamed her? She's mm-hmm. lived in a cave for however long herself. Um, is she going to have any injuries if she's fell down the cliff? And I was like, right, so we've got vet bills to think about, we've got a condition to think about, and actually, if you boil it down, you've got the fact of she's coming to us who, you know, hopefully we're renowned for our animal welfare, world renowned for animal welfare, but if she comes to us and within two weeks dies, mm-hmm. you're, yeah, the finger's what gonna happens? Get it's going to be like, they went to, you know, they're finger pointing anyway, so it was a, it was a big risk. Mm-hmm. Um, but thankfully, it's not turned out that way, and she's doing great. But that was the that was the risk, um, and that's how it kind of came about. But from your point of view, is it was the perfect Dulscon was and is the perfect place for her to go. Yeah, yeah, 100%. yeah. It has to be because we can we can cover all the time. We know ex- everyone knows exactly mm-hmm. how she's doing, what her health's like. If she's getting any friends, you know that's the big. That was the big plus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just so open and tr- transparent. That that that's the great thing. Everybody can see her there, and you know I dare say, come twenty fifth of March when you open for the summer, it'll be one of the most common questions you get asked is, "Where's Fiona?" Yeah, you know she yeah, is going to be the star attraction, and and folk, you know, we're making. Farmers, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 uh, nobody will care about seeing Ben and Pete now. It's just <laughs> straight, Why would you? <laughs> straight, straight to Fiona? And you know, although you know, people are going. She's gone down there to be um, exploited as an attraction, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like she's so socialised now with people. Really, yeah. And the difference with your facility compared to the one that was suggested she went to there, they hire out weekends to come and pet the sheep and all that. With you, the sheep are on a pen, mm-hmm. and it's a big pen. If the sheep doesn't want to come to the front and see the people. She sits at the back, fine, where she is. You know, everything's a very... Choice, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Controlled environment. Um, you know, and everybody will see it online when it gets busy in the summer and that. Like, it, yes, it's a farm park where people are going to come and look at it and stuff, but... Well, she's like, not always been a pen, but, though, you know. We but can... why shouldn't they as well? Like, she's a fantastic story, a fantastic life. She, she's actually she, inspiring for a lot of people. I, you know? And sheep get so used to seeing people. Like, see that situation? She'll be so used to it within mm. a, a week. I think you know. she's already used to us going well, about, used to about, about all the time. About all yeah. the time but yeah. I think the, there's a lot of the farming community I think had said at the time, and you're right when you said that, that we, it kind of put us in the farming radar, but I think a lot of people in the farming community were kind of not seeing the big picture. You know, just a sheep. You know, And a lot of the, a lot of the, the annoying comments came from the farming community, probably from... Um, a few of the less experienced farmers saying, "Oh, she would get you know a hundred pound the fat ring." Yeah, you know that ridiculous. That's the kind of folk I'm talking about. There's just... there's a bigger there's a bigger picture yeah. here. You know, Fiona had a great message and she done amazing things for charity. Uh, that aside, she had an amazing message for people. Like mental health is a humongous thing, not only in farming, uh, but in the wider world as well. You know, a lot of people are are feeling pretty lonely. Have lost a spouse recently or lost a family member. Really feeling it just now. 
look at the the way that Fiona's came out of it. You know, mm-hmm. she was world's it, loneliest sheep, obviously, it, and now look at her; she's absolutely thriving. So it's a nice message to to send to people as well, and one that I think should be promoted. Yeah, mm-hmm. and raised a lot of money for RSABI and the SSPCA. She's an ambassador for RSABI. Never say that again. No, that's, I, that's <laughs> not my that's not my tagline. Although I love it. That's good. That's good. That's good. Um, they so do great work, though. You know, and it's a oh, it's a, absolutely. Oh, yeah. We've we've done a lot with them, like um, over the last few years. And I myself, in fact, that's actually a shout out I should do because uh, I've recently seen it just come out of the bank. I on the farm side of things, my farm account. I'm a. a Oh, I don't know what the actual term is, but it costs you £150 per year. Just a one-off payment every mm. year, £150 to RSABI. It's to, you're, I'm not saying you're a partner. or There is a name for yeah. it, but it's like you, you're signed up to, you've pledged this money. And like an annual subscription thing. Just, just an annual thing. Them. It just comes out <clears throat> once a year, £150 to RSABI. I would encourage folk just to do that. Like I do it as a sort of pay, pay it forward type thing mm-hmm. and that there's a good chance at some point I might need them. Mm-hmm. So I'm paying forward my dues now for when I do need them. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I would I would really ask uh, people to take a wee look at the, or RABI if you're in the south, mm-hmm. if you're in England and in, in Wales, they do the exact more or less the exact same stuff. So yeah, we pay our hundred and fifty pounds towards that, and it, it clears my conscience, which is great. Well done. So it wipes the slate clean every year, and I can Good go again. Can <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. So yeah, no, feeling. So yeah, we, we end up raising about eight thousand or. Uh, no, eleven thousand. Wow, eleven thousand. Eleven thousand for huge. RSCBI and uh, SSPCA. So really good causes. Yeah. And the SSPCA and me and Cammy both discussed, we had quite a few phone calls. Mm. We were in constant contact at the time when everything was yeah, going on. It was never ending. I thought, Chris, I wish I'd just... I know, you're up and down the road field. like a yo-yo. <laughs> <laughs> but they were... Um, I still need to figure out how you've done that pin thing. You know when you dropped your pin? So I could see, like, because the TV crews and everything were there and he's like, I'm here. And I could watch exactly where you were going oh, yeah. down the road. Just share my location. So is that all it is? Yeah, just WhatsApp and then share my location. And then I, te- I text him yeah. like, have you stopped for a chippy? Because I could see you in Thornhill. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Need- Stop, stopped at the baker's. Like, <laughs> oh, it's such a good baker's Great in Thornhill. Baker's yeah, Thornhill. Yeah, oh, Marchbanks. Really What's the name of it, yeah, actually? Marchbanks. Marchbanks. Eh? Marchbanks. Marchbanks Baker's. It's it was really nice as well because they uh, recognised me from the sheep game too, oh, so it was nice. Yeah, good. yeah. And then they were all like shouting. There was like actually a queue because it is so popular. Then they're all shouting, "Oh, that's the guy that rescued Fiona!" <laughs> and then I'm pure embarrassed. I was like, "Because it was such current news, it was yeah. like head, head, yeah, head literally paper. happening." And they're all like, "Oh, that's amazing!" And everybody's chatting and wanting to take photos. And it was like, "Ah, oh, that's quite cool." I was watching. I was walking through Buchanan Galleries. You know that bit. My wife loves to walk through the. You know the jewelers in the yeah. Glasgow High Street. We were walking through that the other day, and uh, it was absolutely chucking it out, outside. So. We were heading through there and someone, uh, we were chatting away, someone comes running up, are you the Fiona the sheep guy? And I was like, eh, yeah, yeah, that's me. <laughs> and runs off. <laughs> I was like, how do I deal with that? Did I just walk, what do I do with that? Well, that was Glasgow. Yeah. It sounds very Glasgow. So and then she just ran away. So I was just, folk were looking around like, who's that guy? And I was like, do you want a picture? Or, like, <laughs> what, what was the point in you doing that? <laughs> I don't really know what the... What but, the reason was? So yeah, it can be quite embarrassing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. be an awkward situation. Yeah. Do you have people approach you quite a lot? Uh, not off the yeah, yeah. Everywhere now. Really? No, yeah. Not off. Not for not Fiona. Off Fiona. For, for no, Dulscon. yeah, just for those gone. Yeah, because yeah. and really this year the live streams have really kicked off. Okay. You know, like the other day we were um, what were we lambing? We're lambing like, a triple uh, goat. Uh, not like Kidding Startmore. Uh, oh, Gravy Startmore. Gravy Startmore. They're they're yeah, lambing at the minute. Um, but we were kidding a goat that had triplets and everyone was watching her for ages to see when she was going to uh, kid. And we had 7,000 people watching live. Um, yeah, no, that was a bit, that was her biggest one. Yeah, it was 7,000 live. Uh, and thankfully, everyone was, I had to end up kidding her, but everyone was okay. But you know that you're reaching that many people and that's only on there, you know, probably like, you know, 100 and odd thousand views on that. But that's every video. Yeah. Throughout the, you know, most videos are hitting 70, 80,000 views now. Live videos. That's some of them do a little less. That's incredible. Some of yeah. them do a little less. But that, it's not all the same people watching them all the time, if you know what I mean. So no. you're yeah, reaching yeah. A, a huge audience. Um, I was on my, my Facebook app the other day and I reached in the last uh, three months, in the last 90 days. It works in three months for some reason. I don't mm. know if you've seen this, Cami. It was 23 million. So there's oh a lot of people God. see you. Uh, there's a lot of people see you. So no matter where you go, there's a, someone has the cabbage yeah. checking, hasn't it? No, I don't the last time you showed me your reach, I was the last last thing last time you showed me your reach, I was raging because it was so much higher than mine. 
Ah, but mate, you can't be caught. You know what I mean? <laughs> can't be talent. You can't be. Either go or you don't. <laughs> Uh, what's, I don't know, that's yours uh, uh, Sorry, I meant to say it was 122 uh, uh, this, is, this is like back to the Highland show Blowing up the numbers He's never made 500 quid in a month in his life uh, Right, wait till I see Right, I want to go in meta here, okay, so It's in the last 90 days I don't know why I'm doing it I'd be better getting you to do it Is it on meta? No, I'm saying I'd be better getting um, Ben to Okay, meta and then professional dashboard. Bear with everyone. So, it's losing yeah. And we'll take this moment no, no, just we'll to say out, hello we'll to and a little message from our sponsors. <laughs> like it, like it. You're going to get my spot. <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> Most foragers don't supply sheep and cattle with enough cobalt, copper, iodine, and selenium, critical to digestion, immunity, reproduction, and growth. When it comes to supplementation, there's a danger of under or oversupply. But when bolusing with Animax Traceshore, you can be sure every animal has enough for up to six months in one single application. Animax, giving what it takes. Okay, and during that ad break, I've managed to find the numbers we're looking for. Are we keeping my segue in there? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, it was lovely. You nailed it. Word from your sponsors is great. You might get a sponsorship one day. <laughs> um, at this rate. When I'm a big boy. <laughs> when you're a big boy. Um, uh, my so, my reach, uh, 90 days, 23.7 million. Oh, heartbreaking. I'm 20.5 million. That's <sighs> okay. It's all right. Oh, heartbreaking. Beaten, hey, beaten by a farm Cammy, park. Cammy. Can you believe it? <laughs> Cammy, I'll give you a share. <laughs> Give me a shout out, mate. Bye. Uh, that's interesting. What is your? Uh, I never look at. I genuinely, genuinely never look at this um, Facebook stuff. I really mean that. Um, mm. And I, I look at the monetization bit, but I don't look at this reach thing. So, what is your content interaction? Yours will be through the roof, is it not? I'm at six hundred sixty-three thousand. Twelve million. I see. There's that's. Well, but then the saying, that, saying that, saying that, content is like us. I mean, you yeah. should have content published. What's the? What's the content published? Because I'll publish a lot more as you. Oh, uh, it doesn't show me that. But I mean, I, I, I have in the last three months, I have eleven million minutes viewed. But your live streams, you'll be you'll be insane. You'll be like a hundred million. Figures always help, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, it's not something that's. You know, I'll be honest with you, and um, I think I mean, I've not really said this before. Like all I really care about is YouTube. Like, which is weird. Like, I just. That is weird to me. Yeah, because it's not that great I earner, but no. but it is the best audience. Different for you for your live streams, mm -hmm. but like your best quality audience is YouTube. See, I think as well, like with with social media, um, sorry, Anna, uh, with social media, I think that your quality of audience far outweighs your followers. So your follower account, your follower account is just ego. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, your follower account is is completely ego. So. You could have, I would rather have 300,000 followers than have 10 million, but have so much more engagement. Yeah. yeah. And and yeah. those scone followers are like, uh, you know, sheep game followers too, of course. Uh, they actually are. Like, sheep game followers are really, really good. Um, Because they're all kind of part of the farming community as well. Not yeah. all of them, but a lot of them are those sconies that have come over as well, which is great. But the those sconies are so engaging. Oh, you know, amazing. Yeah, you amazing. Know, yeah. You look at my comments now, most of them are those scone folk. You know, they're really, really nice. Uh, to be fair, if anyone wasn't nice, I just kick them off like straight straight away. Um, I don't mean criticism, but I mean if somebody's rude to someone else or oh, yeah. mm -hmm. or, or s is offensive, they I just have to go. Yeah, kick, oh, kick them straight off. I, I won't have it. But you know, just going the, the quality is absolutely there, and the sheep game as well because so much of it's the farming community, and I think it helps that you know I can take a slagging, like I almost mm -hmm. encourage it. You know, like yeah. it's, it's actually basically my whole personality but you know, is set myself up for a second. Do you not think you kind of have to be like that a wee bit for doing what we're doing? Because oh, I, I take a horrendous slag on social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, you, yours are good the way you set that up between you and Pete and that and the banter with everything. Yeah, yeah, it is good. Um, you yeah, have, you can't, if you fun. take yourself too serious, you'll give up because yeah. the negative comments will get, and I know negative comments suck, everyone hates them, but it only takes one to really knock you down, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But really, you know, what we probably both get is pretty pretty small, thankfully. Um, but it's still difficult when they come through. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if they're, if they're too much for me, I'd just delete them. Oh, yeah. Don't need to see that. Don't need to look at that. <laughs> too fragile. I was actually thinking the other day, Cammy, the perfect, what we should have done, I wish we'd done it, was I wish we'd, and if benefit of hindsight, we should have had a documentary when Fiona was coming after the rescue 
but well, also made, made video footage of all one of the after. one of the rescue, but the footage after I think would have been equally as interesting. Yeah, the drama. Mm -hmm. Save that because point. it, it was documentary. Yeah, it was drama, wasn't it? Because like the phone calls that we had, where I was phoning you in the morning, like back off. There's just abort mission because you're mm. not gonna we can't bring them down when the the folk were outside and then the conversations we were having with the australian vet from mm. good morning yeah or what's it what was it on this morning this sorry morning, this morning yeah. shows how much daytime tv i watch um this morning you know the conversation we're having with him and cami was on facetime and um he was very much she has to go to this sanctuary and i was like listen oh it was a funny i said to him again There's you're, something funny you're barking up the wrong, really upset him. wrong tree <laughs> It was a funny I said he, on the FaceTime. He kind of started he, having a wee go at you, didn't he? Or he was... Well, well he, after I nailed him a belter, he, he started slagging my appearance. <gasps> Remember yeah, he that? did, yeah, yeah. It, what, said, it? You, <laughs> said you look like Wilson of uh, Castaway. Uh, oh, he went, he just lost it. He went, yeah, he did. Did. Where did I get him? But it was absolutely, it was so funny. Um, <laughs> it was the... You know, it's like the chilly minor thing. Or a, oh, no, I wasn't that. I can't remember. But anyway, I nailed him an absolute belt. Or about I'm saying, trying to think. That drives me mad. Because I mean, he was sitting. Because I was sitting <laughs> next to him, and he was like, "Yeah, I really think she needs to go. These people aren't going away. Um, they're going to tent out. I know they're. I know they'll be tent out. I know what they're like." Uh, and I said, "She's no going. There's no way." Well, and he well, said, "Where's Where's the secret location that she's being held?" I said, "No telling you." Aye. I was like, "Oh, don't be like that. Don't be like that." I said, "No, no, not a chance." Oh, we'll go and see her. I said, "Not a chance." The, there was one thing I said to him bef before that that got him upset too. Is it, is he said it, he said something that wound, wound wound me up quite a bit. He said it would be easier just to hand her over to them. Mm -hmm. And I said, "In life, you shouldn't do what's easy. You should do what's right." Aye. Mm -hmm. And we're doing what's right, and that got his back right up. Yeah. Because I'd, I'd called him out, you know. Yeah. And, and, and I think you know that's. The the conversations that we had is why I think people would have found it really interesting because the behind the scenes comments that we had and uh, conversations that we had and I think Camille uh, backed me up here is when I had phoned him and I said look the protesters are outside and m m the main problem was my mum and wee sister were in the farmhouse they were standing right outside with all the plaques and mm. had it and everyone in full public view could see it and they were scared they didn't know what was going to happen yeah, and that's course. totally understandable you know when someone arrives in your property unannounced starts oh, protesting it's outside it's stressful and right. uh, we didn't know where the tensions were at the time we obviously know that they're saying it's a peaceful protest now but back then we didn't know and especially when the drone started flying above the farm you know that was the next next level and that's when i'd done that video uh where i was explaining you know what was happening mm -hmm. and they were outside and it was intimidating and uh, and mum and alice were you know they were getting uh, they were getting worried about it, um, and that blew up as well. Like, you know the whole story was just like a tinderbox for for people. They were so interested in it, mm. uh, and it had like a million and something views on it. It was mm. crazy, really quickly. Uh, and the, the great thing was everyone was on our side with it. But I'd phoned Cami and I said, "Look, uh, these folk are outside." And Cami had said, "Listen, don't stress about it. We'll we'll get it sorted." I said, "I'm not stressed about it because I think we can outsmart them." That's what that was my words to Cami because I knew, and the reason why I thought we could outsmart them was because I knew we were doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. If I thought we were doing something wrong, I would have been like way more standoffish and trying to appease them. And you know, it's mm -hmm. all right. It's mm -hmm. it. but well, you start to doubt yourself and be like, oh, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe we need another course of action here. Mm -hmm. But you know what you're doing is right. So but it's... we but we were on the right track from the start, and that's why I was saying, look, we've got we've got the farming community behind us, and I'd said to Cami as well, it's a good example of standing up to these people. Because it's so easy to cave into them because it, they're intimidating, they're they're extreme, and you have to stand up to them and you have to you know yeah, fight your absolutely. corner. And we were doing nothing wrong; we we're doing the right thing. Aye. And, oh, and I think we knew we had that. Generally, I know I was involved in it, so I'm going to think this. But I genuinely think that the whole thing was the biggest win for farmers over that uh, extremist mm. uh, animal activist thing, whatever they want to call themselves. I think it's the biggest win ever for farmers over them. Because mm. when have you ever seen them tuck their tail and leave like they did that day? No. Because the whole social media, like the whole world basically turned against them. Yeah. Um, and actually did a, I think their, their bosses at Animal Activism. Yeah, I think, same, yeah. I think they got, I think they got called off the job. I think their bosses, the, you know, the head guys at these extremist things were on the phone going, guys, get out of there. This is, mm -hmm. you know, we're losing donors, we're losing... Mm -hmm. uh, support because their their Facebook was <sighs> aye they, they, it was like you know the way the way they troll farmers and and, mm -hmm, and uh, mm -hmm. they were getting destroyed really? oh destroyed like uh, on but all for, that a, for a bit of context as well this group is the same group that was at the Grand National and jumped in front of a horse and the horse fell and died there you go <laughs> it's the same people so that's why when they first arrived that's why we were so you know what are they going to do are they going to come up they're flying the, my initial thought was they're flying this drone above because they they're going to try plan. 
Mm -hmm. Aye, they're making a plan. Are they going to try and get into the animals and let them all out? Are they going to, you know, you hear horror it's stories. Are they going to try and set bales on fire? Are they going to, you know, what are they going to do? You mm -hmm. had no idea. So we didn't know Thank what goodness was... you had your parachute training. I know. One morning in the like, hey, hey, I'm ex-military. <laughs> One morning running about the forest in my trackies trying to prove myself before I got destroyed and rejected. Ben's in the bathroom with the face paint. R Rambo, but the lines under his eyes. I thought you were me going to say he was moisturising his hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is harsh, Iona. Ah, the poor man's lived with that his whole life. Oh Rejection. my god. Isn't that? That's wild. <laughs> You're You're good good guy. I'm not that cool. Come on. Sorry, wow. <laughs> Sorry, you might be that was a belter. That was quite funny. But no, uh, that was a belter and I'm going to cry two hours on the way home. But That was an absolute I belter. I also get eczema. <laughs> oh, it's too late now. You didn't have it before. I've, I've got a cousin that's got uh, eczema, so I know what it's like. Don't worry, Ben. Mike, don't worry, Ben. I get rejected a lot as well. <laughs> Oh, she loves a good knockback. Uh, <laughs> um, aye, aye, good, good. That's good are resilient. Well, listen, on that, on that, uh, resilience is a big factor. Yeah. Uh, right, on that uh, absolute cruel ending, I think uh, we should probably wrap it up there, eh? We've been long yeah. enough. I think we've, we've talked a lot of nonsense, a lot of good things as well. Yeah, I think so. Uh, it's just been a bit of fun. Good fun, yeah, as it always good. is. Well, yes. it's been great to have you on, Ben. Listen, Thank guys, you. check out Those Gone Farm on Facebook. They're on YouTube and all sorts as well. Uh, but the big thing's definitely Facebook and loads and loads of lambing content just now and kidding as well, of course. Lambing season's yeah, coming up. Just before I do finish, do you have a goat with six kids, Stu? We do, yeah. <gasps> mm -hmm. I think it's classic Dunk. It was Dunk in, no, it wasn't. It was David Kennedy that scanned it. Uh, David, yeah. Yeah. I think it's classic David even goes to six. I would just be like, ah, there's four, that'll do. Well, <laughs> you know, he got, he got to five and he's like, oh, I think I think there's another one here. I think there's another one in here. I think that's one up the top. And I'd say to him after off camera, um, I was like, like how how often do you get a six? He's like, we never see them. Yeah, oh, he's like, yeah, we get fives. Yeah, yeah. He's like, but you never see a six. He's like, I've only had a handful in the whole. How many have you had? I've uh, well, I wouldn't even pick out a six if there was a six. I've had maybe three fives. Um, no, I, she's she's got a six. Yeah, and I think maybe all of them were in, no. A mule cleanse. Two mm. were in cleanse, and one was in a a mule. But um. Six that, that, there is Jews that have had six because you see it in the Scottish farmer every year you know you get like big blue faced lessers and stuff have six but I, I, I never would have thought a goat would have six mm. yeah a goat with six Rebellion she's not even that big eh? no she's not crazy so, she's one of her home breads as well yeah. I, I, I'll be honest I always thought goats were like quite low scanning percentages I thought goats were well we had like we had each. nearly 200% of our goats this year and we had a, we had a lot of triplets well easy like enough when you've got in having six <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you've only got five <laughs> no. the rest are singles <laughs> <laughs> But no, we had a good, we had two hundred percent scan percentage, which for goats is amazing. Yeah, I would have said so. I don't know much about goats, but I, I didn't think they'd be as prolific as like a mule yow. Well, they're um, not. No, no. So that's well, we we have we have had a lot of triplets for the first time ever. Last yeah. year we had two triplets, uh, but I think this time we've got we've got twelve triplets in our six. But we've only got like fifty goats, fifty boar goats. That's in our boar goats. Mm -hmm. So we've only got fifty boar goats. Such a huge, huge. Uh, yeah, percentage yeah, for, yeah, yeah. for triplets and goats certainly serious almost done too well I think great for the content though that's six thank you a live stream on the yeah. six I, I've been <gasps> in touch with I'm going to tune in I've, I've been I hope you tune in anyway <laughs> sorry Ben of course <laughs> 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 uh, I've been uh, in touch with the vet school never to try and get her diet right just to try and get a, a best best chance we had one with five before um, once but we got three out that were alright but I'm trying trying our best to, mm -hmm. to get the six out it's terrible to say but like see if I hear six I instantly think disaster. Yeah, yeah I think, but yeah, I, I, I would guess, total guess, that the majority of sheep or goats I've ever had six in them, uh, majority are probably going to come out dead. That's the sad thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's just such a, such a difficult thing to get them to carry them far enough, and then get them out alive without Problem something is, wrong in the way. Without them, without them going premature because they've got no room in yeah, there, have they? That's yeah, the they can't. Big and all it takes is a wee bash, and if one dies inside, that affects the whole other thing. And oh, she's in a pen herself, pen oh, her off good. herself. That's good. Um, but yeah, we're doing everything we yeah. can. Hey, you can only do what you can do. Yeah. Do yeah. your best. You can, all you can do is your best. Yeah. So then we go tune into Dosco and Farm to see how uh, this kidding of six goats go. Uh, <laughs> Don't set me up. Yeah, yeah. Make your first live stream with Dosco a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get that in a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks very much, Ben, for thanks, coming. Gammy. It's been fantastic. Thanks, Iona. Thank you.
So uh, what did you think of that? What did you think of me? That's <laughs> <Let's go again. laughs> <laughs> Although you did say <laughs> Right, bring it in from now, Ashley. Just start this from now. <laughs> the podcast is over. I want us not even laughing <laughs> at the podcast, although it was good fun. She's just laughing at the fact that she can't get herself focused to end this. <laughs> and actually, this is our fourth attempt at, at doing this outro for the podcast because we keep going on tangents while we're talking to ourselves. <laughs> My God. Right, come what on. What did you think of that chat? I really enjoyed it. What did you think? I think Ben's got some business on the go there. Him and Pete yeah. and the rest of the team, unbelievable. And the way the social media's blown up, I know. the things they're doing with that, sky's the limit. I do think it's very brave of them, putting themselves out there like that with like live streams. You know, it's different when you're doing... I know you're no, thinking about doing more live streams, but I'm, with your YouTube... I still feel it. When you do a live, yeah. you, you, you're nervy. You're like, because anything can happen. Uh-huh. And that's why people like watching live. Totally. Because they know it's not set up. Yeah. They know nothing's been cut out. Mm-hmm. What you're watching is happening somewhere in the world. Yeah. Uh, and that is the exciting And it's thing. happening right there with all the other people who are watching. Like they're in it. Like there's the a community. Yeah, I yeah. can understand why people are into it. Yeah, so please do. You know, if you've never looked at them before, jump on Facebook, have a look at those good farm. Incredible business I've got in the go. Thanks as always to our sponsors, which is... Crystalix and Animax. Trace your... Trace your bolus. Uh, find your bolus I still love that one <laughs> uh, that is us for another week what have you got on next week Iona are uh, we doing a Q&A this week yes let's do a Q&A this week okay before Lamin yeah kicks off, let's keep those Q&As going yeah. please send your questions in podcast mm-hmm. at fedbyfarmers.co.uk and we will try and answer some if you may we'll answer them all let's answer them all let's answer them all get them yeah. in we'll answer them the all the juicier the better Jeez, someone did ask how much I make off YouTube Yep, getting answered. Right, okay. Right, uh, there we go. That's what this week's Q&A. Let's answer that one. I don't mind. Let's answer it yeah. in this week's Q&A. Okay. Thanks for listening, folks. I've been Cami. I've been Iona. And we are both Fed by, by Farmers. farmers.